Hi, this is uh, Chan Chai from Portland, Oregon. I've been playing Virtua Fighter since the 90s, since the very first Virtua Fighter, and I've been in, I've been active in the North American Virtua Fighter scene, the community and the competitive scene since about 2000. Oh. Hi, I'm Renzo from San Francisco, California. Uh, I've been playing Virtua Fighter since Virtua Fighter 5. Uh, vanilla. Um, I actually got into Virtua Fighter in, uh, for, uh, when Virtua Fighter 4 Evolution uh, came out uh, like a few years I guess before VO5 and yeah I but I started playing VO5 competitively. Uh, 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 my Virtua Fighter uh, career competitive in 5 sorry no worries at all. You did great, uh -huh. and um, we're gonna cover that question again later, so it's not it's all good. Okay. So, uh, you got the intro. It sounded good. Okay. So, um, all right. So I'm gonna start asking you the question, then I'll do the question after. So, uh, so repeat the question when I say it, and then um, repeat the question, okay. and then answer it um, as you feel. Okay. Okay. So, what is Virtua Fighter? Uh, what is Virtua Fighter? Virtua Fighter is a game, a fighting game made by Sega. Uh, back in like the nineties, um, it's probably considered the godfather of all three D fighting games. Uh, I guess pro like akin to like Street Fighter Two being, you know, what started off for two D fighting games. Um, yeah, it was pretty revolutionary for its time, and yeah, I think that's that's about it. Yeah, right. What do you that was a good answer. answer. Really good answer. So, what is Virtua Fighter? Virtua Fighter is the first three D fighting game made by it was made by Sega around 1993 uh, in collaboration with Lockheed Martin, and. Uh, they had set the trend for uh, polygonal video games with Virtua Racer and then Virtua Fighter. And then also Virtua Fighter 2 came out a year later, about a month before Tekken came out in Japan. Uh, Virtua Fighter introduced some interesting uh, aspects to the fighting game genre. Street Fighter 2 had been popular for at least a year and Virtua Fighter came out around 1993 and it had the control scheme of guard, punch, kick, just three buttons and the arcade stick. Um, this set the template for a lot of other, especially 3D fighters, uh, like Soul Calibur and Dead or Alive. And with Virtua Fighter, um, instead of having like fireballs or the types of special moves that were a feature, a huge feature and popular feature of Street Fighter games and other fighting games, Virtua Fighter uh, tried to cement itself as being just a little more realistic, more like a kung fu flick. Uh, and so it focused more on representing martial arts and uh, more simpler attacks and spacing. Um, the 3D element would be more emphasized later, but uh, it was quite a revolutionary game when it came out. It's even featured at the Smithsonian uh, because of its contribution to video game history and uh, for also for polygons and their representation <coughs> in video games. And uh, yeah, the, and the series has consistently been a huge hit in Japan. Um, not as popular outside of Japan, uh, though some regions it was popular like in Taiwan and Korea during certain craves in the arcade days of the 90s. Um, but the series has a dedicated following and has a great reputation for um, for very intense uh, martial arts fighting and um, being very competitive and pretty well balanced. So that is the Virtua Fighter series and uh, Sega is very proud to be the ones to uh, manage this series. So, um, all right, so what would you say makes uh, Virtua Fighter stand out amongst the other fighting games? Uh, what would I, how does Virtua Fighter stand out? 
in terms of finding um i would say i guess the how fast paced it is yeah how fast paced the game is um because you're constantly in like these guessing games all over the place during a match um and the one of the interesting points about the game is like how fast you have to make a, a decision during those guessing games and um and it has to like you know in order to win they have to like yeah be correct obviously with all these guessing games and um to make a decision in that short amount of time is like really really hard and stressful but that's i think that's the appeal and one of the appeals of the game and how fun it is to make those decisions um and also i believe that it's more of a i guess a game where like it's not it doesn't look too flashy but it's still like really entertaining to watch uh because of how fast paced it is there's like no fireballs or weapons or whatever but um just just seeing how the players play and seeing what decisions they make is what makes it entertaining to watch and yeah i think that's what makes it stand out that was a really excellent answer and uh, um yeah no and i really feel that i mean mm. it's uh and you also get like a good you have a good perspective on it because you're able to see those decisions being played out because it's really yeah. rapid it, yeah it's uh, pretty intense yeah and then, uh, so I'm gonna answer the question also. Um, so, oh, what's it? No, go yeah. Okay. So, what makes Virtua Fighter stand out among the other fighting games? Well, let's start with the style. I think stylistically, uh, Virtua Fighter is really focused on martial arts and really focused on. I still would say it's focused on like, like a cinematic representation of of a grounded martial arts. Um, even though they do have high jumps and stuff like that, but in the latest game, it's not that high. Um, but this is in contrast to, let's say, like Tekken, which I think has kind of evolved to be a lot of pop culture elements and into kind of like, you know, it's like everybody's doing like megaton punches and, um, and it's just, uh, it's like a power fantasy when I see Tekken fights. And, and it's pretty, you know, exciting in that regard. And then when I watch like Soul Calibur, it's a lot of weapon-based fighting. But Virtua Fighter really stays grounded in this classic appeal, you know, kind of like a Jet Li flick or something, or even a Jackie Chan flick. It, I really liken it to the martial arts films, but also this idea of martial arts. And, you know, in the 70s through 90s, martial arts were still very, very, very popular. And, um, you know, now it's we focus more on mixed martial arts and UFC. But there's still an appeal there. But I think at its core on style, Virtua Fighter has this strong appeal to martial arts. And I would also say that when I play this game, I feel like I'm learning a martial art. Mm -hmm. I did study different martial arts when I was younger. And trying to get better at Virtua Fighter really feels like you're trying to get better at a martial art. Um, there's always this nuance. There's always this aspect of combat. There's always different answers that if you can just open your mind to you find you realize there was a different way you could have approached the situation uh, even when I'm sometimes redundant myself <laughs> um, competitively if we're talking about the mechanics of Virtua Fighter I think Virtua Fighter really stands out for an incredibly like ridiculously fast pace of play the way that the initiative is exchanged meaning uh, you have to make decisions very frequently in Virtua Fighter at every single beat. Um, in many fighting games, you make these decisions, but you're also, there's a lot of like strong pressure, strong powerful plays that your character will do. And a lot of times, especially in 2D fighters, but even in like Tekken, it's kind of like a strong pressure that goes through that could be subverted, but a lot of times it's maybe four or five beats before like, before the other guy starts to strike back. And, and turns the tide. But in Virtua Fighter, that tide can turn at every single beat. Doesn't always, but it can exchange that fast. It is really fast, and it is like playing rock, paper, rock, scissor, like every split second. It's pretty intense. It is very intimidating, 
but I think it gives Virtua Fighter its character, and part of that character is the um, part of that character is how uh, you you start to have a conversation with your opponent through the play, and there's always an answer. There's always something you can do if you can if you can predict what your opponent's going to do, including guarding. Um, you can totally just kind of ruin their day in that moment and really hit them hard. Assault, you assault your opponent's decision making in Virtua Fighter at every beat. So if I know you're gonna guard, I'm gonna throw you. But if I know you're gonna try to throw me, I'm gonna attack, you know, or I could attack. Or I could just block and do a throw escape to try to mitigate those two options. Um, but then there's all kinds of other techniques. You start learning how to use spacing. You learn how to sidestep and you develop advanced ways of doing those things so that you can change the decision making. Then you have half circulars. And these things exist in other fighting games, but Virtua Fighter really like, is relentless in the pace at which you kind of do these things. And that sounds intimidating when we describe it like that. But when you're learning the game, you really just have to start with the basics, like a jab, a throw, or an elbow, and movement and defense. And with those things, you can do a lot, like a boxer learning a jab, a straight, um, a hook and, a, and clinching and movement and then it evolves and but as you evolve you feel like you're achieving a new level and that's why it feels like learning a martial art to me and I think Virtua Fighter does this on a on like an unparalleled level in my opinion I think mechanically that's what makes Virtua Fighter so exciting to me I think also that Virtua Fighter um, has achieved another reputation that makes it stand out among a lot of fighters. And that is what a lot of players would call balance. Um, so all of the characters in Virtua Fighter are extremely viable. We're not gonna count Doral because that's too viable. <laughs> but in Virtua Fighter, like every character, you can, you can pick the character that is considered the worst and you can still beat like 99% of the world with that and more than that. You know what, you can still beat the top player with that character. And it's not like it's not necessarily a joke either. It's just that it, it's just that some of those challenges only really appear at the highest levels of play. Uh, for the ninety-nine point nine 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 percent of all the players, um, every character is extremely viable. Uh, and I think on this balance, I can't think of another fighting game that challenges that balance. I think Virtua Fighter sets the standard for viability of characters. And I think part of that is also though because Virtua Fighter is very much a system oriented game. It's a game where you learn how to play Virtua Fighter first. You learn how to, and when you're learning your character, it's how to play Virtua Fighter with that character. And then those other aspects of the move list and their features come into play. They flourish in the gameplay and in the matches, but you kind of, you kind of build those a little later. Um, though in the beginning, some of those stand out right away. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So I think, I think Virtua Fighter just does this beautifully, but it is, what I've just described is kind of hardcore. <laughs> and so that is the hardcore appeal of Virtua Fighter. Um, I definitely think that sometimes, like especially Virtua Fighter 2 and Virtua Fighter 4, and even vanilla Vi Virtua Fighter 5 has a, a good appeal to casual players. They do. In that those games just like felt fun for casual players, and I think Virtua Fighter still feels fun for casual players, but what I can say is that Virtua Fighter consistently looks more beautiful the stronger the player is. That's and, a good way of putting it. And, and, so like, and so when the players become really strong, yep. when you, the more mastery you have as a Virtua Fighter player, mm -hmm. it, the game just looks more, even more exciting. It rewards you in like how it looks and how it plays, the decisions that happen, and Sometimes a lot of people can actually see that. So I think, I think Virtua Fighter has these type of core values um, or just happen to represent that. And that's why, uh, you know, I think one of the reasons that Virtua Fighter's player base is old, like the average age is probably <laughs> 35 at this point, <laughs> yeah. is because the old guys never stop playing. Yeah. And even though I described this relentless pace, and you would think an old person could no longer play like that, in this game, they still play pretty damn sharp. Yes. 
and it's it makes Virtua Fighter really exciting, and it makes it kind of a, the lifestyle game of fighting games. Yes, you know, it's like these guys will just not quit playing Virtua Fighter. <laughs> you know, it should always be there. Yeah, yeah. so th that's what's exciting about Virtua Fighter for me, and I think that's what really, to me, mm. biased opinion, uh, separates it from a lot of other fighters. But I definitely feel that people. I have a lot of friends who are lifelong Tekken fans, mm. and so there's that appeal too. But Virtua Fighter especially feels this way to me. Mm. Um, then, uh, next question. Um, so, how did your journey in the competitive scene begin? Uh, how did my journey into the competitive scene begin? Let's see. So, uh, it all started with, um, so, I played other fighting games back then. And then uh, I went to EVO when it was still in like, I think Cal Poly, I think in LA, and one year I think it was two thousand three, Evil two thousand three, uh, that like uh, there was like some uh, announcement or oh before Evil there was like some talk about like the Japanese players flying over to like um, all the fight like like you know all the games for Evil that year and then even VF players coming just for VF uh, because. Uh, Virtual Fighter 4 Evolution was a main game that year in 2003 and uh, so I was like well, what's Virtual Fighter like how does this game play um, and stuff like that and then uh, I went to the, well, grand, the finals day and uh, they had VF uh, uh, I think like pretty pretty early and then um, it's and then I think it was yeah, Irazan was in top, top. It was like top four, I think. It wasn't actually a top eight, um, or or top six or something like that. But yeah, Irazan was there. Also, Kiro was there, and Chibiro was there. So watching the finals was like really, really exciting because this is like a brand new game that I've never seen before. And um, I mean, I've seen bits and pieces uh, here and there when like VF Four Vanilla was out and on commercials and everything, but. Um, I mean, I've never seen like like high level gameplay from like competitive players in tournaments and all that. So when it was like the grand finals of Chibiata versus Osu Akira, um, yeah, that like blew me away. Like how fast paced the game was, how exciting, like, yeah, all, like every like round was between those two. And at the time they're like, considered like one of the best players in the world, uh, two of the best players in the world, I suppose, yeah, at the time. And um, yeah, from then on, uh, yeah, I decided to give it a shot. I bought VF4 Evo uh, for my PS2 and yeah, just fiddled out uh, around with it uh, and just really fell in love with the game. Um, and yeah, we had a small, like like a small group of uh, uh, players in in Cali in NorCal like playing VF4 Evo um, and you know we would just try to play as much as we can to learn about the game uh, even though it was like a really like it was like only like four people yeah and um, after that uh, you know the announcement for VF5 uh, was yeah that. That was announced, so I was like really looking forward to that game, and and when it finally came out, I put like quite a bit of time into that game. I was like playing a lot of other fighting games too around that time, and especially like the three D fighters, like Soul Calibur, Tekken, and then now I have like a third three D fighting game to play and practice. <laughs> With. and then uh, yeah out of all of them yeah VF5 was like probably the most fun for me yeah um, and then yeah that's how I started playing competitively from VF5 vanilla yeah and you haven't stopped since right? <laughs> yeah I mean on and off but yeah I, I, I yeah I think like to be said it best like you probably play VF until like you're an old man yeah. like even though you stop you still like kind of want to play it because it's such a good game yeah it's the, the game's like it's like always different every time you play yeah 
Yeah, so it's, yeah, it's a really, a really fun game. Yeah, it is. And um, no, and that's an awesome story. I mean, you were, you were inspired by watching the highest levels of play. Yeah, Chavita was already considered a VF god at the time. Yes, so was. Oso Kiro was considered like the top competitor in VF. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and Hidazan is no joke, was considered one of the best and one of the legends. Yeah. And, um, you know, and then you got to see high level play mm. at Evo. And that also speaks to like how valuable a big tournament is. Yeah. And being able to inspire others to see like what a real fighting game is about. Yeah. But also, uh, at, at that Evo, you also had the announcer, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so, and, and, that, and so you got like the full Japanese experience, right? And like in the hype. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, you know? what's his name? Yam Yam Yamanishi Yam Yamagashi or something? Yeah, I forgot his name. But yeah, that that commentator, he, like he was well known in the community in Japan, and he was like pretty famous <laughs> commentating. Yeah, I was just a kid back then, and yeah, seeing these two like VF gods playing it out showing how great this game is was like yeah mind-blowing experience yeah absolutely mm -hmm. so um so my journey in the competitive scene um or actually how did i get into the virtual fighter series i kind of forgot that but we just covered that for you all right so that's technically we did yeah you, you got both questions in there. Oh, really? <laughs> so i'm gonna have to answer this in two parts <laughs> um and uh Let's see, if you want, you can go ahead and make the phone call and I'll, I'll do this portion of the video while you're doing okay. that. Okay, so, right, so how did uh, my journey, uh, so still. All right, so, so how did my journey start in Virtual Fighter? I started with Virtual Fighter 1. I was very active playing in arcades. Uh, at the time Virtual Fighter 1 came out, I was about 13 years old and um, and I saw Virtual Fighter 1. I saw Lao and looked like Tao Pai Pai and that's no coincidence. Um, and so I wanted to play as Lao at first and I liked it. I, I thought Virtual Fighter was very interesting, you know, the polygonal look and that it didn't have fireballs or special moves or dragon punches um, at that time. And so it was very unique and interesting and I was compelled to play it. It was just very, very uh, intriguing, but I liked it. That said, I fell in love with Virtua Fighter 2. When Virtua Fighter 2 hit the arcades, I played it, I really liked it right away, and then the more I played it, the more I fell in love with Virtua Fighter 2. I, um, I did work in restaurants since I was 12 years old, so I did have personal income at a young age, and um, with Virtua Fighter 2, because of how much I love that game, when the Sega Saturn launched, I bought a Sega Saturn. Um, I skipped the PlayStation for a long time. I made the decision I wanted the Sega Saturn, and it was because of Virtua Fighter 2, because I loved the game so much, and I just wanted to play Virtua Fighter as much as I could. Uh, and I played a lot of Virtua Fighter 1 on the Saturn, and a lot of Virtua Fighter 2. And Fighters Megamix, Fighting Vipers, yeah, I, I played the Saturn to death. It is my most treasured memory, and it is actually my first Sega console. So Virtua Fighter made me a Sega fan. It's not the other way around for me. Um, then uh, it all changes around Virtua Fighter 3 when it came on Dreamcast. Uh, unfortunately, Virtua Fighter 3 was hard to find in the arcades in the US because it was a really expensive arcade model. And that meant that in a system like in the US where arcade machines were leased to different places, it was hard to be profitable. Virtua Fighter 3 is, was a machine that was hard to be profitable. So in each city, you only had a few of them. And they all had to charge a dollar fifty or a dollar, maybe two dollars to play because of how expensive that machine was. Um, I was told, yeah, it, it's just extremely expensive. And that made VF3 very hard to find. Uh, whenever I found it, I played it. But a lot of times it would move to another arcade or another location. So. Sadly, uh, I didn't get to play much VF3 in the arcade, and I wish I could have. So then, um, so, 
be? How did my journey in competitive scene begin? Um, well, I'm going to talk about my journey into the VF community in North America. And that starts with Virtua Fighter 3. Um, so, 9-9-1999 was when the Dreamcast came out. And within a month of that, I bought a Dreamcast. And I specifically want to play Virtua Fighter 3 Tournament Battle, which was a launch title. So I played it right away. And at that time, um, I started going on to VirtuaFighter.com, what we call VFDC, still very active, still the first place any community member should go to. Anybody who gets into Virtua Fighter, they should go to VFDC. It is a wealth of information. It was a wealth of information then and a source for community interaction then. And it is a huge wealth of information now. Um, I was active on VirtuaFighter.com and later I would get active in other places for Virtua Fighter, such as the home of Virtua Fighter uh, Fnet channel on IRC. Um, and through that, um, I found out that there was a pretty strong uh, player that had a lot of experience with tournaments from Toronto and they had moved to Seattle. I live in Portland and they're in the Seattle area because they worked at Microsoft at the time and that was KB Cat and he drove down to Portland to play with me because we chatted online. And so unfortunately the power went out when he came to Portland so we didn't get to play we just hung out. But a week later, I drove up to Redmond, Washington, and I, and I stayed overnight and played VF with him. And that was awesome. That's when I really felt I was going to be a serious, I was seriously going to be a part of this community. And so after that, very shortly after that, uh, the New York players for Virtua Fighter 3 on Dreamcast organized a gathering. And that includes Adam Yuki, who is still one of the best players in the country to this day. Uh, it was also organized by his good friend, um, Andy, crew NYC. And uh, yeah, so I went to New York to play Virtua Fighter. Um, and I went there to get better at Virtua Fighter. And the best thing happened. Um, at that time, the, the Virtua Fighter scene, it wasn't really about who's better. And I mean, there's some of that, but it wasn't really about who's better and beating people. It wasn't even about tournaments at that time. It was just simply about getting better at Virtua Fighter. Everybody at the Virtua Fighter, at New York Gathering 2 in the year 2000, was there to just get better, just to find, to have more opponents to play with, to enjoy this amazing uh, game together. And so we were there for many, for, I was there for five, six days. I brought a v VCR recorder and we recorded. I recorded lots and lots of matches, but I took lots and lots of notes, and I spent many hours chatting, but I spent many hours playing, and it was amazing. And, um, and New York's big mentor, Hero, uh, taught me a lot, but also from Boston, uh, player RSW taught me a lot, as well as um, another player named Peter, and so, who played Leon. And uh, fun fact, the reason I play Leon, uh, I'll, I'll get into this later, but I, I randomly chose Leon. I just randomly chose a character to, take, to, to focus on, and I've been playing Leon ever since. So anyways, I went to New York, had a wonderful time. I came back to Portland, and I was determined to create a VF community in Portland. Um, and so I contacted a friend in the, in the arcade scene. I asked him if he could introduce, if he could even though it's a player I'd met and played with, I asked if he could schedule a meeting with Portland's top player, who was Rayblade. And Rayblade and I met, because we, and we both loved Virtua Fighter. And we played right away, and it was like fireworks when we first played. Uh, we had friends over at my house when we played, and they were really surprised at how fast and fluent Virtua Fighter 3 could be if the players knew what they were doing in the game. And that was the beginning of forming the community for Virtua Fighter in Portland. And ever since then, every iteration of the game, I've tried to help build the community and we've been successful. And even in Final Showdown, we built a very strong community and we built like a team of competitive players as well as a bunch of uh, a community of players who just enjoyed playing VF and didn't have to be the best. 
And so it was, it's been wonderful ever since then. Um, I've, uh, I've consistently built communities wherever I've been and I've just found that I can always find someone to play and that it just takes some perseverance. It takes some, uh, some of the know-how, uh, but it, it takes a lot of effort, but the passion, a lot of people get attracted to the passion uh, for Virtua Fighter. And so we, and so even when I'm in my college town, when I was in college, um, I would find players. And I would even find Korean players in my college town. Um, people who came from other competitive scenes. And Korea was one of the best competitive scenes for Virtua Fighter 3. And it had a very cool competitive scene of Virtua Fighter 4. So I was fortunate to have some members of those even at my college and that I, my persistence paid off. Um, so ever since then, uh, I was a competitor and I have played in many tournaments. I won quite a few. And I've, uh, and you know, I have a reputation for my Leon. So that's the story of how I got into competitive BF. And uh, we'll talk a bit more about what I'm known for. Come on in. What did they say? Didn't pick up. Huh? She didn't pick up. Didn't pick up? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's let's do a little bit more of this, and then we'll go there. Oh, it should be okay. All right. So we already covered um, getting into Virtua Fighter. Yeah. And how you guys are competitive scene, kind of. Okay. Right. And then for me, I just covered those two topics myself in a long-winded way. Okay. So um, okay. So next. All right, this is a little more complicated, so you can answer this however you need to. So don't feel like you have to fit it into this question. All right. Just kind of answer it however it's appropriate to you. Okay. Because you play a lot of characters. Uh, okay. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> so it says, tell me about the character you main and a bit about their moveset. Oh. Uh, so you can restate that question however it feels. Okay. So the character I main, uh, yeah. Yeah, the character I main is Brad. Uh, he, well, he was a Muay Thai-ish character, but now they changed him in, uh, in Final Showdown, Ultimate Showdown. Uh, he's more like a, yeah, he, he's, he's labeled a kickboxer now, or something, and then, uh, yeah, uh, his moveset revolves around a lot of, like, uh, like, a lot of mids, stances, uh, like, uh, ducking stance, sway stance, uh, let's see, he has a back sway, back sway stance, and, um, yeah, he, his strengths are, like, uh, punishing opponents, like, guard punishment, that's, like, one of his biggest strengths. Uh, I came from Tekken, so, uh, that's, that's kind of, yeah, that's, like, one of the, uh, appealing factors about him, is, yeah, his punishment, like, skills, and, uh, let's see, um, I guess, uh, his kind of, his, his playstyle kind of changed from, uh, from VFI Vanilla to Final, to, uh, to Ultimate Showdown, the Final Showdown, like, uh, kind of, like, uh, like they kind of changed like a lot of his. Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. Well, they they rearranged some of the um, yeah. the skills that you are required in his yeah. in his uh, repertoire, right? So yeah. like like stance based combos were changed. Yes. And then uh, very timing specific combos were changed. Uh, kind of, yeah. 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 I think we have to do this question over. <laughs> yeah. No problem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then, uh, so we're doing over the question, three, two, one. Uh, so tell me about the character you main and a bit about their moveset. Okay, the character I main, uh, so the character I main is uh, Brad Byrne. He is uh, basically the Muay Thai character, uh, Muay Thai, yeah, character of the game. Uh, but in Final Showdown, Ultimate Showdown, they changed his uh, style. He's more of like a kickboxer now. He took away like a lot of his uh, Cool Muay Thai esque moves away. Uh, so now he's been more simplified, and like with well, the whole game in general. Yeah, he's more simplified, and uh, 
it took a lot of uh, some of the flare out, but uh, he's still, yeah, he's still basically, um, still, yeah, still basically Brad. Uh, his mids are strong. Um, uh, let's see, he has like a lot, a lot of stances that you can work with, like um, a sway stance in both ways, uh, a ducking stance, which is really strong, uh, back sway. Uh, and I guess, um, let me see, they, they kind of changed the way he plays now, like, I mean, with almost all characters, but especially for Brad, uh, he, he has, like, right now, um, they compensated some of his, uh, some of the moves that they took away from Vanilla, uh, for some better moves now. Such as like his ducking, uh, ducking uh, people skate. Uh, sorry, yeah, ducking people skate. Uh, sway people skate is also good. The high elbow uh, that launches on normal hit. Um, he he still retains his uh, like punishment skills. That's like one of his uh, strengths actually as a character. Uh, like uh, punishing stuff on block is like one. Yeah, it's like. Uh, yeah, one of the appealing factors about him because I, I came from Tekken, so that really like fits with uh, my style of play, if I suppose. Yeah, so he's yeah, he's a pretty good character in this game right now. Um, yeah, pretty strong. Um, hit checking is like really required. Really, oh, well, that's all characters, but hit checking with him in the stances is like really, really. Uh, yeah, that's like really required of uh, 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 the player to be able to like ex execute, especially at high at higher levels. Uh, I'm still working on that. It's so pretty difficult. So that's like the damage barrier. Yeah, that is. Yeah. Like you're not gonna mm -hmm. do your best damage unless you really check all of these things. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. doing your combos. Just doing yeah. your launcher. Yeah, that and like to prevent them from prevent, to re prevent the opponent from uh, mashing or abarring you, and um, yeah, he's uh, I would say he's still a fun character to play, uh, and yeah, that's about it. <laughs> well, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna ask you about I'm gonna list some traits mm -hmm. and give me like a rating. Whichever you prefer, do you prefer A to like A to F, or do you prefer oh a, or S to F even? Yeah. Um, okay, so let's rate uh, uh, guard punishment. Guard punishment, yeah, A. A. Okay. How S about uh, yeah. Okizami? Okizami, um, yeah, pretty up there. I think it's good. So like, yeah. like a B or yeah, B ish. Yeah, okay. B, B. Yeah, around B, maybe. Yeah. Okay. How about force two choice? Just force two choice, counters. it's good, yeah. So he can force yeah. uh, mid and throw pretty decent? Mid throw, and then he has high kick to counter for a bar and stuff like that. Yeah. That's really but good, yeah. his two choice, um, like if it's like mid and throw, like uh, his throws are not that strong. Like, yeah, like how would you rate his throws? <laughs> yeah, his throws are like, uh, like a B. <laughs> yeah, like B -ish. a B, maybe even an F. Well, I mean, everybody's, I thought everybody's, everybody's throws are good. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, everybody's throws are good, but his is like, yeah, it's him and John, like, they're considered like, kind of like on the low end for throws, like, the throws are not that damaging and not that good, especially for like, the situation afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, and then, uh, but Brad's always been like that, it's, it's like ever since four, his throws like, were like, really low damaging, so. Right, and in this game, that means that the opponent can just cut off your strong throws. And yes. So you're, so you're left with your weak. Yeah, your weaker, your, like, your okay-ish throws. And then what you're yeah. saying is that your okay-ish throws, they don't even give you like a superior position yeah. for the lack of damage. They just give you a lack of damage and just yeah. an okay position. And then you just, yeah, you just have <laughs> to again, so yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So they're just treated as just free damage. <laughs> yeah, well, just, free just take, damage. yeah, just take a throw and okay, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> then, um, how about like a mid-low mix throw for anything like that? But you already kind of covered it with the Abari, like Abaris are just covered. By special high, yeah, like yeah. But I would I will say like uh, ducking clinch, mm -hmm. that's like that's like a good thing that they gave him. 
even though it's still like uh, I think that makes up for the throw by a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah kind. Yeah, kind. Because the opponent's yeah. in a defensive position, that clinches pretty strong. Yeah, because they gave him a catch throw, but it's kind of a little risky. Yeah, kind of risky because yeah, of course it's a high catch throw, and um, yeah, and you could still like obviously guess afterwards the three way um, throw break. Um, yeah, but it's it feels like it's just almost the same situation with his regular throws because forward. Is the most damaging, especially towards the wall. So you break that, then you only have your back and your uh, your neutral, and those are low damaging too. But that's part of his ducking uh, mix up, because ducking people stay in the clinch, right? So that 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 makes it itself is strong. How would you rate his width punishing? Width punishing is good. Yeah, yeah, up there. Yeah, probably a, a. Yeah, probably a. Yeah. Maybe even an S. A S. Um, I wouldn't say S. Yeah, I think that's more like he just likes the range, probably. Uh, yeah, like it's like, a more short range with punish. Yes, more short, more shorter, and then you know some of them are like uh starts off high. Gotcha. So yeah, I think Jackie's better. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, yeah. It's hard to beat beat knuckle, right? <laughs> yeah, beat knuckle, spin, <laughs> spin heel, high angle kick. Yeah. <laughs> then um, so then how about ring out? Ring out? Oh. Ring out? I don't. Like so so he because he does have carry on his. Own. He has he can carry, carry, but he can put he can move people across the ring. Yeah, that's yeah. that's yeah, that's just like yeah, carrying. But ring out potential, uh, I don't think it's yeah. Do you think it's just so so? Yeah, it just I don't know, just normal or yeah, nothing's nothing like too special. No, I don't put it as a B or a C. No, like it's a D. <laughs> I don't really I don't really see him ring out too much anyway. Yeah. So like there's there's like no focus on that with him yeah how about the wall the wall oh his walking is good yeah it's up yeah. there yeah if he gets pretty good the wall it's really good yeah it's really good yeah yeah he has a lot of ways to get somebody stuck on the wall yeah yes yeah, and uh side game is his side game is uh side turn game sorry is pretty good as, as well so yeah awesome mm -hmm. i'm gonna be right back to continue this i just need to make a quick phone call Were you able to reach them at all? No. no I think we should. Okay. Should I head out or? Yeah. Um, and then come, <coughs> come back. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Yeah, I think they said they pulled for like an hour at least. 